Hello everybody, what are you? Welcome to episode 30 of my Oxygen Not Included Let's Play series with the Spear Start in DLC. In the previous episode, we started dealing with the power issues on our main asteroid by setting up a couple natural gas and petroleum generators, as well as a couple oil wells. But there is still one step missing for all of this here to make sense. So, with a further ado, let's jump back into the game and have a look. And here we are, back on Abeno at the triplet of oil wells. Now, before I start getting distracted building the petroleum boiler, I would like to, first of all, deal with all of this crude oil that has accumulated down here by, well, essentially just grabbing myself a liquid pump, which I'm going to place right here. And then I'm just going to dig out this little chamber here. And once this is set up properly, I should be able to get all of this crude oil here into storage. And there we go. All that's left now is waiting for the crude oil to make its way up through the pipe all the way to the proper storage over here. But while that is going, we are obviously not waiting. Instead, we are going to have a look over here because as you might have noticed, I at some point in the last episode, I placed another high pressure gas vent up here and actually cut off this pipe because this constant stream of carbon dioxide was backing up this pipe over here. And that is obviously a bit of an issue. So this was the quick and easy solution, but now that I have a little bit of time, I would like to build something a bit more efficient. And that is a packet stacker. So I need a valve, I need a shut off. Those need to be connected to the pipe and then over here, the top two. The shut off needs some power and it also needs to be turned on. And once that is in place, I can start removing the high pressure gas vent over here. And with the addition of one last gas bridge over here, this is now working as intended, as you can see with this one kilogram packet of carbon dioxide. Very nice to see that. Now, let's finally have a quick look at Dribblin and let's see what our noobs are doing. Ruby is taking a break and Ren is idling because, yeah, because all of the digging that is doable without the skills has been done. So let's have a look at the skills. Yeah, let's see. Okay, here's the skill points and the morals. So I'm going to give him the skills up to super duper hard digging. And Ruby 2, yeah, also has enough moral. So let's do the same for those two. Okay, now they can continue over here with all of the digging. And at some point I should consider starting taming those geysers, but that is something for the future. Now, let's jump back on uh, Beno and let's have a look because the next project will be in this kind of area down here. And that means that I either need to dig down here or you know what, I'm going to just dig my way over from the side here until I reach the edge of the oil biome here. The only thing to be aware of is that I have a pretty big chamber here full of zombie spores and there is also some germy crude oil over here so I will have to be a bit careful over there. But besides of that this is just going to be a bit of a boring digging and ladder building job over here. And here we go everything is now planned out at least until I reach the oil biome. Now the oil biome is a bit warm but my hope is that by digging in from the frozen biome here I can reduce the heat here to a point where it's not embroiling my dupes. I don't really want to spend the time making a proper enclosure and putting a checkpoint in and whatever. So my hope is that by making a insulation layer up here and then cooling it via the frozen biome here, I will be able to avoid that. And as you can see, I already planned out getting rid of the germs over there. One eternity later. Okay, now this took quite a while, but now, as I can see, the entire bottom of the map here has been dug out. The only thing left over is getting rid of the debris, but my dupes are already on the job. But while uh, they are doing that, we may as well start working on our petroleum boiler. And, and that is something I wanted to build for years now, but never had the chance, which I now have with this vertical magma biome here. I want to build a magma battery, basically compressing the entire magma biome content into a single tile. But I am getting ahead of myself. First, I'm going to need a floor in here. 
and there and down here. Now over here I want my magma battery, for that I'm going to start with some metal airlocks out of steel, or otherwise they would melt. Then a mechanized airlock right here. Then let's add a couple more insulated tiles at the top there. I'm also going to need one more here. And while I'm here, I might as well add those four here in total. Then this one here will be part of a liquid airlock, which goes in this spot there. And then we'll go straight down here. This means I'm going to need a bottle end here, or to be more precise, I'm actually going to need two, because I want to put in two different liquids in here for a reason I will explain a bit later. So, then I am going to need two gas pipes out of, where do I have it, igneous rock, in those two spots filled with two different gases and since I have it around I will like go with oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the two gases are now in place. I also already put in the liquid lock which as you can see is a mixture of petroleum and crude oil and with this configuration I can make sure that no matter what type of liquid comes in here even if it's crude oil it will not be able to displace or pressure any kind of liquid over and onto this side here, which is very important since I don't want any of this here turning into gas and destroying my vacuum. So, now I think it's high time to get in here and connect this inside here. I just have a couple temporary tiles here to get a proper vacuum going. And then I'm just going to dig down here and I'm actually going to need a ladder in this spot out of ceramic. So, that shouldn't be too hard. Now I need to, oh, I might actually have to also remove this one here temporarily so my tubes can actually get all of the debris out. But now let's start working on this side here. And the first thing I actually need is a bit more of an insulation layer on this end. And then over here, then I'm going to grab myself a metal tile for now, only one, and place it here. Now, for the mechanized airlock, I'm going to need a power source. And at least the mechanized airlock might get a bit warm, so I'm going to go with steel there. This wire, by the way, was the one I used earlier to run a pump, which was needed for those two gases. But I'm digressing a bit, so let's continue on. I need also some automation wire, again, steel behind the airlock, and then I'm going over and then up to this spot here, where I'm going to place my thermosensor. Then I need a couple temp shift plates out of diamond, one in those two spots each. Now I can grab myself another two metal tiles and place them in here. The next step then is putting in four tons of water here, which nicely enough equates five temp shift plates out of ice, which when I place them up here will exchange heat with those insulated tiles and pretty much immediately melt. Unless of course you use ice that is at minus 40 degrees, then it takes a little while. But now this is done and I can start closing this off with some more metal tiles here. And those were the last ones. And then I can also put in the top of this conversion chamber here. Then a ladder here in case I need to get in there. And uh, this whole thing with the ice gave me an idea. Or yeah, this is now very cold. And I'm not sure those here will work as intended, especially if I get any kind of magma solidifying in here. So I think I'm actually going to switch over to ceramic and then I will have a tube broiling for just a few moments until those have been removed again uh, once the magma is in place. So I just want to do this manually just so I can make sure that they are released in the proper order. But let's continue on. I need a ceiling in here. 
and, and that ceiling needs to end over here somewhere, but let's figure that out for now. So I need five right here, then a double layer of window tiles, but for now I'm just going to put in one. Then radiant pipes, sneaking through here. Then this will be the output for the slightly cooler petroleum, which comes from over here via a liquid pump out of steel, just to be on the safe side. Power is already in place, so I can continue with the automation. Like so. Then a temp shift plate, out of diamond of course, not ice. Then let's see. Or high, then I will have a floor here and another floor at this height. That will be basically the layout where I'm going to place in my, oh, come on, where I'm going to place in my steam turbine right there. This will be the back wall. Then I have my wall over here. And in this spot, I'm going to place a liquid lock. And then I can start evacuating this whole chamber here before I put in the floors. So I don't have to wait until the air has actually snaked its way all through the system. So this is still being done. This needs to be done. And in, oh, let's move this again. I first need to get in a couple of liquids, of course. And yeah, so let's start working on all of this here first. And it looks like our dupes are quite the proficient sleepers because we just finished the Somnium Synthesizer trade. So let's have a look. So meeting the initial quota of dream content analysis has triggered a surge of electromagnetic activity that appears to be enhancing performance for duplicants everywhere. If my duplicants can keep in this building fueled with dream generals, perhaps we will continue to reap this benefit. A small side compartment has also popped open, revealing an unfamiliar object. A keepsack, perhaps? So let's unlock the maximum aptitude mode. And that is going to take a little while. 1500 seconds, okay. Nice, interesting. Okay, so that was nice to see, but in the intermediate time, my dupes have finished upgrading those to ceramic. So I think it's time to have a look at how this is supposed to work. So let's speed this up just a tiny bit. So now Ruby is here and we should see very soon this here filling up with Magma and Magma has the nice uh, advantage in this situation that it usually doesn't really overpressurize and can't go upwards unless you use special means. And this is what I meant earlier. Since this was so cold, I now have igneous rock all over the place and that might have wrecked some havoc with the overall system here. And of course Ruby is just being scalded. Uh, but now this is hot enough so I can start getting rid of those here. Just need to make sure that it's done in the proper order. So Ruby is the one for the bottom. And, ah, oh, come on. So, Ruby will have to wait. So let's go a bit lower with the priority for this until Gosman is in place. And there we go. Now all that's left is getting rid of the ceramic in here. And that is already working as you can see. So we are now concentrating all of the magma that's currently in this chamber here. And once no magma is flowing, I can go over here and start digging up and getting all of this magma also into the chamber here. But that is looking quite nicely, but nevertheless, we have still a lot of work over here. So, two and a half cycles later, the chamber is now properly built, but until I get all of the rotten wood out of here, which is primarily the leftover sleet wheat that wasn't swept up in time, uh, I won't be able to actually draw a vacuum, so I snipped the power wire for now. 
as I can see, I am also putting in an atmosuit checkpoint because once I reach the heights at the very top, my dupes would be way long out of breath before they get anywhere close to that. So that is being built. Uh, the steam chamber over here is also already finished or almost finished. I still need the liquid vent and the reading pipe for the cooling. And then let's go up to there. I also need the power wire for the for thing. Let's change that up like so. Okay, that's looking much better. So once that is built and I have a bottle of petroleum and then a bottle of water in there, I can close this off and finally put in one more bottle of water on the floor and then close all of this off. Except I'm actually opening this up here since I want to draw a vacuum in there too. Although, ah, it's not really necessary. So, anyway, that is all looking good. Now let's have a look at Dribblin. How are my dupes faring over here? So, a good part of the digging has been finished. So I think over here I'm going to start taming this volcano, which is, if I remember correctly, let's see. Yep, it's the aluminium volcano. And somewhere over here there is also another iron volcano, but I can't really find it right now. Um... Also interesting, we have a cool steam vent over here, so we'll have to deal with that too. Which we can do via the output of this cool salt slush geyser over there. But that is something for a later episode. For now, I'm going to start taming this one here, but since you have already seen this in multiple episodes earlier, I'm just going to do this in the background, and at some point I might show you the final result. But for now, this one here will have to wait until all of this debris has been removed and there we go we now have a proper vacuum most of the debris has been removed except what was left from the pub itself and now it's time to put in the floors so i'm going with floors out of igneous rock that's definitely enough and those are two blocks high and uh, one of my dupes is getting scalded yeah obviously they are getting scalded um Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Hopefully they will get out of there before they die. That would be really annoying. Okay, safe. That is pretty annoying, but now they are somewhat safe. And that should rectify itself pretty soon once the flow stops again. So, but I was working on the floor. As I said, I'm going with two high floors, so my dupes later on can still walk through the entire thing without any issue. Then, ladders on this end and ladders on this end so my dupes can get everywhere. I can then get rid of these uh, ladders here, they are no longer needed. And now for the pipes. So, the output will be in this corner here, and the entire floor will have a radiant pipe following it. Uh, maybe not up to there. So let's see. Uh, this one will be a normal pipe instead. Since otherwise there is a chance that if I use radiant pipe in this spot here, I might actually get the petroleum or the crude oil in here turning into petroleum and that would be a bit of a problem. Anyway. Uh, let's grab a few more pipes and put in the rest of those connections. Now for the input, the crude oil will come from the top through here. So I need to go down. And then I have my crude oil coming from over here. And the petroleum will come from over here. Or we'll have to go through this pipe there. Um, let's see, how do I want to do this? I think I'll oh, come on. Put those two together. Like that. But like so. And run them straight up. Uh, this wouldn't work. So let's see if I can run them straight up here. Yeah, that would work. So. Ah, come on. 
just a few moments until the saving is done. And then I can run the pipes into this spot here, put in a couple insulated tiles, and then put in the rest of the missing parts. So, and that didn't work out quite as intended. So, this one here moves up to this spot, this one here moves up to this spot, then I need to, for now, go through the liquid bridge. Then, as I said, I need to insulate the tiles here. A ladder here so I can get up there once I am at that point. Then this one here will have to go through like so. And in this spot, I will need a liquid meter, which will go downwards. I'm going to connect this to a signal, let's say right there. Let's connect it up. Then I'm also going to need some power. And that's pretty much all I need uh, for this to work. Or did I forget anything? No, that looks like this is the missing parts done. Okay, now let's have a quick look on Dribblin. So as you can see, I've built up the theme for the aluminum volcano. This is pretty much done. As you can see, it already erupted once or twice. So we have some steam already accumulating in here. But for the most part, this is not running yet, but soon we should get some aluminum to work with. Now, the digging is pretty much done over here, especially since I brought over Max, so I could do the analyzing of the aluminum volcano a bit faster. And I also found the iron volcano, which is over here. So I think I'm actually going to start taming this one here again in the background. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to put in one of the plug slugs into the last spot down there and uh, the other ones I'm just going to get rid of. Yeah, I think and that uh, is what I'm going to do here. And on this end here, I'm just going to wait until all of this here has been built. And the petroleum boiler is more or less finished. I, by the way, moved the liquid meter a tiny bit up so I can actually close this here properly off in case any kind of liquid tries to get in here. I can make sure that won't happen. Anyway, now, as I said, let's turn this on. And first, I am going to heat up this water here into steam until I am at slightly below 500 degrees. So for that, all I need to do is close this door here and just wait until I get to 500 degrees or thereabout. And that should be hot enough. So let's first set this to 500, uh, 405 degrees and let's make sure the door is open. And now I need to get the petroleum flowing or the crude oil to be more precise. So for now, until I have this chamber here filled, I'm going with the maximum of 10 kilograms per second and once that chamber here has reached the second layer with petroleum I am going to reduce this a tiny bit so all of this here can first properly heat up before I actually start running this full tilt. Uh, now let's have a look how is this going. Yeah, this is draining quite nicely and we are almost to the second volcano which is good to see. And this one here can't be analyzed because my research dude is on the second asteroid over here. Now, we are already done taming the iron volcano, which was, I think, the last volcano. So I can actually move Max back to the main asteroid, I think. Yeah, that might be a pretty decent idea. Let's speed this up just a tiny bit so we don't have to wait too long for that. Here is Max, and pretty soon he should be starting on getting an eye on the volcano. But since the petroleum or the crude oil is now being turned into petroleum, we should start working on or should start up our two or three oil wells over here. So for that, I need to connect in this pipe. And now we should see water coming in from the top here. At least pretty soon we should see come, uh, some coming over. And yeah, once the whole loop is working properly, we should see this 
starting up probably but we still have a decent amount of crude oil in reserve so that is not too much of an issue and the crude oil over here is also being pumped out quite nicely so that is very nice to see here so okay now as you can see that is exactly what i was talking about the crude oil comes in here gets in contact with oh and oh, almost went above the temperature so we need to set this over uh, as you can see uh, with the crude oil dropping in we have this pumping action and this is sufficient to get all of this here working so yeah this can now start to run autonomously and this is also almost drained so i can start continuing further up but for the most part it's now just a waiting game until all of this here is working properly and just half a cycle later we already have the conversion chamber properly filled up and the petroleum starting on its way downwards and if you look on the temperature of the crude oil in here you will see it already heating up in this counter flow heat exchanger here to quite a decent temperature over there and that is exactly what all of this here is about the petroleum flows downwards exchanges heat with the crude oil and becomes colder and colder and the crude oil is pumped upwards exchanges heat with the petroleum and gets hotter and hotter and hotter until it's just a tiny bit below the conversion temperature which is also the reason this here should be just at 405 degrees or thereabout and yeah that is the entire idea now with the conversion is also a change of um, specific heat capacity connected so i won't be able to actually get the petroleum down to the same temperature as the crude oil and also this here only has a certain efficiency which i suspect is somewhere around 90 degrees uh, sorry 90 percent so if my math is correct and everything has running for a while i should get an output temperature that is somewhere around 135 to 145 degrees which is the reason i have put in a dedicated cooling system here just to get a little bit more of power and heat out of that but for now we will have to wait a little bit more until we have enough petroleum down here that the hydro sensor here will actually turn on the liquid pump and here we go the petroleum is now being pumped out going through this cooling system and then straight up all the way to the very top of the map and then towards our petroleum generators which then will produce polluted water which is pumped up moved down here turned into normal water then pumped further down into the oil wells where it's then turned into crude oil the crude oil then is moved downwards all the way into the petroleum boiler and the loop continues from there on and with the help of this petroleum boiler this entire process is water positive so i'm producing a little bit more water than i'm actually going to need for the oil wells so all in all this here will run infinitely or at least as long as i have heat and yeah with already this amount of magma in there that will take absolute aeons and yeah there is still more to come but i just noticed a little bit of an annoyance i totally forgot that i wanted to put in two temp shift plates in here so let me very quickly do that before this here becomes inaccessible due to well turning into steam and fixed now while i was working on that i also found a little bit of debris still left in here so i already made use of this liquid lock up there which was pretty good that i left it in place now this is already running almost full tilt this still needs a little while until i have enough petroleum in here that the pump here runs without any interruptions like here but let's have a look at what we already have in place so the petroleum is being pumped up all the way to the very top of our base where it's feeding into those petroleum generators at the moment only really four are running but once the system here has saturated all five should be running completely without interruption the petroleum generators produce carbon dioxide and polluted water 
and they actually produce way more carbon dioxide than I can actually deal with a single gas pump. So at some point I might just punch a hole into space and let that out in that way. But for now I'll leave it as is. Now the polluted water then is pumped downwards into the water sieve, which turns it into clean water, which is then moved further down into the oil wells. And since this is a water positive process, we should see this line here backing up at some point until it reaches this overflow mechanic here and will put the overflow into storage. But the oil wells produce crude oil, which then is pumped down again and into our petroleum boiler. And that is in the entire loop for power production via petroleum boiler done. And that is pretty much all I had planned for today. So I think this is a good point to stop this episode. And next time we might get into space and we'll also continue on Dropolin with a couple other things I have planned. And with that, we've reached the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share and comment if you did so. It really helps with the algorithm. Independent of that, I wish you a nice day and well, see you.